Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode of Paratalk. This week I'm joined by Victoria from Haunted Up North. Greetings Reeves. Greetings. Um, yes, uh, Haunted Up North. Now, before we, uh, before we get into the, uh, the nitty gritty of the paranormal, so how did you get into the, uh, get into the podcasting scene then? Uh, well, I've I've always been into listening to and reading scary stories. And during lockdown, you know, a lot of us probably found ourselves with a bit more time than we used to. And so Halloween last year was when I put out my very first episode. But before that, I kind of spent about six months kind of learning about how to make uh, recordings and things like that and just experiment with storytelling really because I've always I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm a copywriter by trade and so I wanted to put those skills to use but I wasn't sure what to do so my friend Jess and I we had always toyed with the idea of doing a podcast together and so we were kind of toying about the theme and I really wanted to do a paranormal theme so I just started experimenting and seeing if I could do it and then I found, because of the wonder of the internet with all the YouTube videos and things on how to make a recording sound good, I just, I, I learned enough to produce something. And once I produced something, I thought, just why not put it out? So Halloween was the first episode last year, and it's probably been, what month is it now? Not um, quite a year. Yeah, <laughs> it feels a lot longer, is what I'm trying to say. I feel like I've been doing it for a lot longer because it's uh, it's taken up a lot of my world, and uh, I don't know what I did before without it, it. Yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. <laughs> it does. Uh, podcasting is uh, very time consuming, uh, yes. and uh, <laughs> it's uh, you have to have a a little bit of a um, you kind of got a little be a little bit sort of regimented in what you do, and especially if you're Definitely. dealing with. Uh, not just dealing with other people, but putting stories together. I mean, when I do solo episodes, um, it's a lot of work. You've got to do your mm. research. I mean, you've got to do your research and all that, and then you've got to put it all together in a way that you think someone's going to like to listen to it. So, yeah, yes. it's, um, it can be, uh, can be a lot of work. So, okay, so you've, you put your podcast together, and uh, you put it out there into the, uh, the wild west of the, uh, the podcasting <laughs> sphere. Um <laughs> How how did it you know how was that for you when you sort of put it out there and was you were you anxious or you know Oh definitely I was really really nervous because it's it that's why I did a lot of work before I actually put it out because I was so unused to the sound of my own voice and the, the first time that I heard my voice I don't know if you've ever found this I was just like no yeah. <laughs> no and then I thought well you can't just you know you can't just give up because you don't like the sound of your own voice so that was the initial setback and you know you get used to it eventually and it's sort of confidence building you sort of get used to particularly with lockdown I I feel like I almost forgot to speak to people and I think that was part of the reason why I did this podcast because it kind of brought me out of myself a little bit when you know we weren't being socially tested as much and so that was initial setback it was it, it made me anxious to think that people I knew were listening to it as well and putting yourself out there with a new project that's entirely you, well, you know, it's a, it's a scary thing, isn't it? So, but it's one of those obstacles that you just have to get over. And thankfully I did get over. I still get quite nervous now about it, but it's it's quite freeing, I think. I've been doing this for a while. Um, and when I did start, uh, I was very aware of my own voice. Uh, mm. I mean, you're you're in the north of England. I'm I'm down south. And uh, I I kind of did my utmost to, I think, over, uh, over, be over sort of speechy and really think about what I was saying and how I was saying it and how my pronunciation yeah. come across. Because I thought, you know, if I really, really try hard, people will think, you know, uh, you know, he's a cool, he's a cool dude. I like him. <laughs> but really, um, when I listened back to it, all I heard was basically paranormal owl with one of the wurzels <laughs> you know what i mean i was like why do i sound in like your in your head in, in your my head, head in my head yeah. <laughs> yeah i thought why do i why do i sound like a farmer you know but <laughs> i didn't really i just uh i just in my head what are you I, saying about farmers nothing sounds like you're saying something no about oh farmers no no there. farmers are great i love i've even got listen 
I've even got Farm <laughs> Simulator. Uh, I'll play that. I find that very relaxing. Um, That's nice. Yeah. Good. Anyway, this isn't gaming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no. Well, anyway, I was going to say that when you um, uh, when you sort of got your got the ball rolling and you started to sort of put episodes together. Now you're at the north of England, and the north of England is um, there's a lot of history. Got a lot of history up there. Uh, yes. Also got a lot of workhouses, and uh, I remember doing social and economic Not anymore. history. Not anymore. Do I have any- not, I mean, it'd be a bit weird if it still had workhouses <laughs> it's up there. Done. It's like... <laughs> where, where you? Oh, I'm going up to the up north. You don't want to go up there. You end up in a workhouse, you know, <laughs> making wool. You know, no, I, I, uh, I didn't mean right now. But I've been there. Um, I've been to a workhouse. Um, not recently, but you know, when I was a young boy, <laughs> not on my own with the school. <laughs> but um, it was a bit weird. And I was gonna, I was gonna ask you, when you put your episodes together. Uh, do you sort of, you know, do you Google the most haunted places or do you have a kind of idea of what you want to do and, and how do you put them together? I would say I'm quite opportunistic. I don't overthink it or plan it too much. The very first full episode that I put out, I just started, like I said before, I just started from home. Yeah. So I live in Haworth and I thought, well, Haworth, it's it's got a lot of history anyway. Uh, it's a good platform. It's, you know, it's the home of the Brontes. It's got haunted pubs and things like that so I just started with that because it just seemed like the obvious thing to do and I thought you know you you start with what you know don't you and then from then on it's been recommendations or possibly haunted locations that I've come across when I've been researching other episodes sometimes if somebody emails me with some ghost stories I might dedicate an episode to their hometown yeah and if if somebody emails me just to say they like the podcast, I'll I'll dedicate <laughs> I'll dedicate an episode to where they live. It it's not reg, it's not definitely it doesn't all have to be uh, in the north of Britain. Yeah, it's, that was just a way of extracting new stories that we might not have heard before. So if someone wants me to do an episode on their hometown and it's it's not technically in the north of England, that's not something I would ever say no to. But yeah, just opportunistic, really. Just uh, just natural, organic. I don't really plan it. I just see what happens. So all of this interest must have come from somewhere. So my, I, th- I have to ask you, uh, when you were uh, a uh, a small person growing up... <laughs> I'm quite small still. Okay. Um, <laughs> I so didn't grow. When I, did, you... I never grew. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, actually I'm still about I'm still about 13 in my head, stuck in 1981. Uh, well, I mean physically as well, <laughs> mentally and physically. <laughs> but um, yeah, so right. when you're growing up, uh, as we all do, unfortunately, uh, and yeah, then uh, yeah, but uh, let's let's just pretend that we're all still young. <laughs> uh, when you're growing up, we all have interests. Did uh, did the paranormal? affect you in any way did it how did it sort of did it spark your interest in things like now or did it how did it come about I've always been interested in darker stories like mysteries and aliens and ghosts and things like that and I I don't know whether it's just something I've always been interested in I can't think of one time like I've had paranormal experiences from a very young age but before that I can't remember one time when I started to get into it. And I I don't know, I've always been interested, you know, autumn and winter celebrations and things like that. Stuff where it's dark and you can sort of feel cosy and and safe in a safe place. Reading ghost stories in the dark in a safe place. And I feel like that about Halloween and Christmas. And I don't know whether it's because I was born in winter or (laughs) I was actually born six weeks premature. Right. Which is it's, it's quite it's quite a chunk of time. So I, I often wonder if I'm just like trying to get back to the to the dark safe <laughs> to yeah. the dark. I think I came out too early, and I want to go back. <laughs> so I think part of it is that. But also, my my parents were probably in their early twenties when they had me. So my mum had only just turned twenty, and my dad he was probably just turned twenty four. So they were quite young, and they were still very much into pop culture and. You know, they still are, but they were more yeah. sponge-like back then. And so this was the 80s, and my dad would tape every horror classic going off the television. I know you're not supposed to. It's naughty, but that's what people did. And he would catalogue it all and label it all and put it on the shelves. And if if it was a horror classic or something like that, 
this is something my parents would actually not stop me from watching, even though I was probably well, gen- not like actually far too young to be watching things like that. But yeah. I, th- I think part of it, it's like a memory of me watching scary stories in my parents' living room and feeling happy. And I think that's probably one of my earliest experiences watching poltergeist and things like, you know, the, the thing and predator and alien and all that stuff. That that's one of my fondest memories watching scary stories and feeling safe at the same time. And I, I think part of it must be a nostalgia thing that's deep rooted in those memories, perhaps. Mm. Oh, I think that's what might have, might have kickstarted it. Yeah. Great time. Great, great time. Oh, Lots yeah, of great definitely. films. <laughs> any any favourite films from the 8th of then? Oh, all of them. <laughs> you mean specifically <laughs> horror ones? Yeah, yeah. Well, I do. I love... Um, I thought the 80s were really good for werewolf films, but American Werewolf, was that <coughs> late 70s, actually? It was that. Yeah. Was it late 70s? So no, I love 80s. the howling... 80s mm. oh well i love that i love american werewolf in london i love the howling they're just so they were just so scary and there was something about them i think in the 80s when they relied less on special effects yeah if you saw a monster in a film like alien it was real it wasn't computer generated or anything like that and yeah. i'm not i'm not dismissing special effects and stuff i think obviously i think they're amazing like in stranger things they utilize it lots and i, I think it's perfect but in films like alien when you saw alien it was a it was an actual alien it was yeah it was a model it was real it was Blake, there yeah. you could have touched it mm. and or it was a man dressed as alien well, in a i, I hope it i hope it was a man dressed as an alien and not a real <laughs> alien <laughs> i don't know i want alien to be real <laughs> the paranormal okay we all get into sort of you know sci- i mean i was a massive sci-fi nut when i was growing up you know you get into sort of arthur c clark you watch you know you the unexplained magazine you get your books and stuff like that um did you ever have any experiences when you were younger that you thought were possibly looking back at them that were possibly like maybe paranormal one of my very earliest memories was a paranormal experience or what i believe to be a paranormal experience i've got it was probably my third earliest memory. I have two memories before that. And one was one was at my christening. One was I was being pushed in a pram. You know, those old prams with a, a lid yeah, <laughs> and a little tiny window at the top. I remember that. And my third memory, it's from the very first house that I lived in. I think I might have moved out of there when I was, I can't, I think I might have been at the latest, I was five years old. So this thing that happened, I was wa- I was of walking age, but not old enough to read yet, I don't think. But yeah. this house, it had a lot of paranormal activity in it. My parents believed it was haunted by the ghost of a lady. The reason why they thought it was a lady is because my dad woke up one morning, someone was standing over his bed in a red coat, a lady in- with a woman's figure, a lady in a red coat. Right. And at the moment, at that time, he thought it was my mother. So he just went back to sleep. You know, when you're half awake, you don't yeah, really yeah, yeah. know what's going on. But when he woke up, she wasn't in the house and she hadn't been at the time that he'd woken up and seen this figure. But also in this house, you know, things would, uh, radios would turn off and on and things would jump off tables. Weirdly, and this is this is something that happened in the have you heard of the herman family haunting in the late 50s it's it's what the film poltergeist is supposed to be based on yeah it was yeah, like yeah. A, i think it was 1958 or something like that i think it, where, where was it i think it was long island they had phenomena in their home where lids would just suddenly pop off bottles around the house and yeah. jars and stuff and that is one thing that actually happened in this house where we lived that would happen um all the time the thing that i saw was my parents were stood at the front door and they were talking to people. I was stood by this table and it was a low table because I, c- I could see the top of it. So it was a low table and it had a, it had a very heavy book on it on the top. And yeah. it was a, it was a book on the Titanic. So I, I recognized this book from later years, knowing it was a family book that we had on the Titanic. I couldn't read the title at the time, but looking back, it was a book on the Titanic. And this book, while my parents were distracted, this book just 
slid across the table by itself and it was a heavy book. Yeah. And it just, it just slid across the table and then stopped. And I, at the time, cause I was very young, it, I didn't think, oh my God, that's a ghost because I was sort of too young to really understand or comprehend what that might have been. I was nervous about it, but the thing that really scared me the most, and I, <laughs> I actually get goosebumps thinking about it now, it wasn't that I thought it was a ghost. It was that I felt this sensation that it, it had been done on purpose just for me while my parents were distracted and they couldn't see it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So that that gave it a bit, ugh, that gave us. I genuinely have go, uh, goosebumps. It, that's what gave it a bit of a sinister feel. So the sinister feeling sensation that I felt was that someone had done it on purpose to frighten me, rather than me knowing exactly what that what that was, and whether it was meant to be sinister or not. But that's the feeling I got. So that's my very earliest experience. How how old were you? I'm not sure. I'm guessing maybe three or something. I don't know what age can children walk, <laughs> but not. But <laughs> what age can they walk? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, a year, a year, and, a year and a bit, something. Maybe I was two or three or something like that. I couldn't read yet. Yeah, and... I, I could. I, I remember my earliest memories of pretty much walking and falling over and stuff, and you know, your mum picking you up by your arm and literally just lifting you off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I I don't think you've got to be very old to walk. Uh, I would have thought that walking was quite important in the olden days when you'd need you know quick run, baby. You know, there's a, there's a lion, <laughs> run. I can't walk. How do I run? I can't walk. I'm on the floor. Help me. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Anyway, so, so yeah, so very young enough for the memory to be hazy enough to be a very very long time ago to be considered a very early memory. So. I was going to say that obviously, you know, you, you, you obviously know this. So, you know, with younger people, um, the pol poltergeist phenomenon is quite, quite a thing. Uh, yeah. not, not necessarily, it's not exclusive to young people. It happens with other, you know, other, other age groups as well. But when you have a younger person and they're growing up and they're, you know, teenagers, normally it's quite a thing, but with younger yeah. children as well, uh, you get, uh, this kind of phenomenon. And maybe who knows? You may have you may have moved that book yourself subconsciously. I guess it depends on the situation, yeah. doesn't it? As well. Oh yeah. I think because because there'd been paranormal activity in the house before uh, around that. I think I didn't realize this at the time, but maybe looking back, I kind of think I presume it wasn't just me that moved that book. But you're right; it could have been. But because of the other activity, oh yeah, you kind of think maybe it was something. But no, it's 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 it's, it's um, it's a, it's an interesting thing to think about. It could have been that and that, couldn't it? It could have been a myriad of different things. Anyone that comes along and says, "Well, it's definitely that," and uh, that's what it is, and you believe me, and if you don't, I won't talk to you again. You know, <laughs> if you can't go down that road, because you know, as you just said, it, it can be anything. It could be, yeah. you know, it could be your you know, your energy in some way. It could be something that manifests your energy and uses your energy. Or, you know, yeah. it could be uh, loads of things, you know. And if you say that there's been paranormal phenomenon in that, uh, you know, in that building before, then maybe there's something more to it. But what I was yeah. going to, what I was going to ask you was um, when you got a bit older, when you grew up a bit and, and you could walk. Uh, so <laughs> um, were you, um, uh, did you take an interest in saying like, "Hey, I've still got an interest in ghosts. I'm still got an interest in paranormal. Uh, I want to visit a haunted location." And if you did, uh, what was your first uh, visit to one, and how did it make you feel? There were two occasions growing up where I would visit haunted locations with my parents. So every year we would go on holiday to Northumberland, and I don't know if you know Northumberland or not, but there's there's a lot of castles. Yeah, and they're very haunted <laughs> so my dad would buy me a lot of real life paranormal encounter books not because he was trying to make me <laughs> be into the paranormal but he knew that I was into that kind of stuff yeah. and I would, I would read all these these stories and when we used to go on holiday there was have you heard of Bamber Castle yes there was an account in this book about Bamber Castle I don't know if you know what it looks like but if you're looking at it from the village Bamber village and you're looking at the side of the castle 
there's a little meandering, very thin meandering staircase that goes up to the centre of the castle and right. it, it meets at this little uh, gated door. Yep. The account that I read was that many witnesses had seen a woman carrying a baby fall from the top of these steps and tumble down like seemingly fatally you know it's a very it's a very steep staircase and so these people would rush and kind of try and come to this woman's aid but nothing would be there you know it was thought that it was a phantom that it was a ghost and I was obsessed with going to the staircase as a as a kid and I would every holiday I would request to go to the staircase and stand on it and try and get pictures and stuff to see if anything would happen for some reason this particular staircase just really held my attention and it still does today whenever I see it but but nothing came up in the pictures or anything like that and I didn't feel anything but something else took me by surprise have you ever have you ever heard of what with castle no it that is in Morpeth and that is meant to be haunted by a grey lady and a man who runs along the castle walls or something like that. I'd love to do a future episode on Watworth, but I haven't done that much research into it. So that's just the highlights of the ghosts that you might find there. But I was there with my parents when I was younger and I was wandering around the ruins. It's a ruined castle. So you've got the main part of the castle, but then you've got this sort of little maze of ruins around it, like you do with a lot of castles. And somehow I I didn't get separated from my my parents. I, I moved away from my parents and was you know, walking because I was older yeah. and looking around this little area of maze. And I, I turned a corner and I came to a dead end of this this ruin. To my knowledge, there wasn't anyone there but me and my parents. There was only three of us there. And <laughs> it sounds so creepy when I say it out loud. I've never, I don't think I've ever really told this story before, but there was a man stood there and he had his back to me and it was like looking back it's so blair <laughs> it seems really blair witch and he had his back to me and i, I kind of stopped startled because if you're a kid and there's a full-grown man it's scary anyway you know in a enclosed area or a full-grown human shall we say and this man had his back to me as i looked at him he started <laughs> he started to turn around and something in me just i was oh my gosh i was so terrified for some reason i thought something is not right here and I don't know what it was. And just, I only saw half of his face and I, I couldn't even describe him properly. It was just the figure of a man. And I ran out and I don't remember saying this, but I, I ran to find my parents just absolutely crying. And I said to them, I've seen, I've seen a ghost, I've seen a ghost. And I, I don't actually remember saying that. Um, but that was a haunted location where looking back, I did experience something that I can't explain. And that was a very early experience. And my parents confirm they didn't see anybody, anybody there at all. And so it's very odd. I'm not saying it was a ghost, but it was very strange and it was an experience nonetheless. Did you ever go on sort of any sort of ghost hunts when you were sort of, you know, like a young person? I do prefer storytelling to going on lots of investigations because I'll be honest with you, I'm really, I'm really scared of them. I, I, I don't, you'd, I'm just nervous. You don't know what you're inviting in. And I'm not an expert, therefore I don't want to pretend that I am one. And it's something that I would like to do in further episodes. I would like to do more on-site experiences and maybe dip my toe into, you know, stretching my wings a little bit and getting some confidence in that area. But the last investigation, big investigation I went on, that was one at, I think it was quite a few Halloweens ago, and it it, it was at Kirkstall Abbey in Leeds. I don't know if you know... No. Leeds very well. Kirkstall is a suburb of Lee of Leeds, and in it there's a a big old twelfth century Cistercian monastery. It's ruined. It's very distinctive. It's lovely right. to look round. And opposite over the road is the Kirkstall Abbey House Museum, which is the house of the old abbots. And I went to a paranormal investigation there with a medium and you know people and yep. with all the technology and stuff so that that is the that was the first big investigation i braved attending and i i really enjoyed it but i'm one of those people who you know you get everybody mucking in and saying hi spirits do you, <laughs> would you like to talk yeah. <laughs> and i'm like i don't want <laughs> i'll just observe you talking to the spirits while i kind of hide and watch <laughs> yeah but that was good uh, that's the thing when you have a lot of people on an investigation uh unless all of those people are on the same page and you've got some sort of game plan it can be 
oh, it, yeah. it can it can get a bit a bit crazy and everybody yeah. sort of you know uh wants Definitely. to um wants to chip in and do their thing and you think well, hang on a minute calm down you know yeah and, and i think totally yeah <laughs> if i were a, if i were a ghost and i was like in a in a building and that's where i was um i think if i was a ghost i'd try and go other places as well but maybe yeah, you know I'd run away from those people um but i'm i'm like oh god they're back again what are you asking these <laughs> questions i'm not gonna you know i i i'm not in the mood you know yeah i just want to yeah so i'm i just wonder that um if that uh form of uh investigation is still still a thing well it obviously it is because people do it but everybody you know everybody's got their own style me i just want to go somewhere sit on a chair eat my sandwiches and see what happens i'm not yeah, i do i don't want to run around i don't want to i was going to ask you regarding uh, uh investigations and as you say you you're more of a, a producer than a than, a, than somebody that goes on in the, you know to the field and does stuff uh, although That's it would be cool. cool i mean one of my uh things i want to do is i want to do a uh, on location recording of a podcast in a haunted building yeah i would love to do that too i want to do that with with other people and to see yeah. what happens but i want to do it over the, like a course of like a weekend or something and yeah. do like a multi you know just to see what happens because you know different people different people's energies people do bring different things to the table maybe you won't nothing will happen maybe something will happen maybe i don't know but what i was going to ask you was how do you feel about um uh the tv and uh you know like tv shows like i'm not gonna you know there are a few out there uh there's a few st <laughs> few still going but it was like massive about 20 years ago it was everything was paranormal everything you had your you know you had you had the british version you had the american version and they were all out there um where do you think is it is it a good thing is it has it made people more aware has it did it help you just you know what's your thoughts on it do you remember a show called ghost watch and it was it was aired in ni 1992 oh yes it was aired on halloween and yes it was put forward oh my gosh it, i was so terrified at the time it was put forward as a uh, reality it was the original most haunted wasn't it but it was a snapshot version and most haunted i i really love shows like most haunted i think they're great and the really good way of bringing to life stories and they're a really good way of advertising tourist attractions and stuff mm -hmm. i think it's really good but with most haunted you have yvette don't you kind of like a bit tongue-in-cheek and you know, it's it is a storytelling thing, isn't it? People aren't expecting people to watch it and believe every single thing. But the the ghost watch that I that I watched, that's probably the one that sticks out in my memory so much because it was advertised as not a hoax. And I was when I when I watched it, I was really really young, and it invaded the home, didn't they? It's like paranormal TV yeah. series. They don't invade your home, and that's why when I was a kid, I loved watching horror films because I knew they weren't real. And this ghost watch invaded your home because it said paranormal things are happening across the country. It could happen to you right this minute. That is one paranormal show that I loved, but probably took it a little bit too far uh, because there was a lot of backlash afterwards. Oh, wasn't oh yes. There oh. was a lot of backlash and they didn't do it again. <laughs> no, they didn't. No, they didn't. And I'll tell it you why. It was so terrifying. It was ridiculously terrifying. Like, have you? Do you watch the very end? It, I watched the very all of end it. Was genius. It was absolute genius scariness and independent uh, newspaper. They did a a story on it. The parents of a teenager who hanged himself a few days oh, yeah. after watching a television documentary Ghost Terrible. Watch blamed the BBC for their son's death. Apparently, he was so disturbed by it. Uh, that he he hung himself. He committed suicide, and it was all over yeah. the papers. And uh, the the show was never seen again. Well, actually, I think you can get it on DVD now. Uh, I know oh, it's I, on. I have um, it on DVD. <laughs> yeah, I think it's on YouTube as well. But <laughs> it's a different level. To um, there's two things that stick out in my head from those days, back in the uh, the nineties. And uh, one of them is um, that Ghost Watch because it was, as you say, it was put forward as you know a real investigation um but obviously it was all kind of made up uh and it was it was like our um it was a bit like the uh the bbc's version of war of the worlds you know it was kind of like it's real but it's not real but anyway the other one was uh jeremy beagle and um he's uh he do you remember that tv show beagles about 
Beadle's about. Beadle's about, that's it. Jeremy Beadle. Do you remember him? Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> so he did a, ske- a sketch, right, where there was... Uh, he did a similar thing where a UFO landed in a, ca- in a housing estate <laughs> and a... <laughs> And they were, I'm gonna have to watch this. Right, and <laughs> I don't they. This. Oh, you, you got to watch it. It's it's it's, it's gold. <laughs> it's gold. But the thing was, right, got hold of this lady who was just like I don't know, out doing her, just popped to the shop, and they're like, "Can you help us? We need somebody. We need like a linguist, somebody who can translate." And she's like, "What? What's going on?" And she come to the UFO, and the alien comes out. And she's trying to have a talk with it, and it's like, <laughs> I was like, "What's going what was on?" Was it an alien? Like someone dressed as an alien? Uh, it was no. It was basically a a, a blow up alien, a, like a blow up doll. So I think not a blow up doll. God, that was a bit. You know, wouldn't have been on telly at seven o'clock. But it's kind of alien. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it was. It was like a um, an inflatable one, but not an inflatable one in the in the naughty carry on sense. Do you know what good, I mean? Good. Go on, I'm digging a hole here. I have got to get out of this quick. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you should I'm go. Saying blow up. <laughs> yeah, blow up. Don't. Blow up <laughs> but uh, anyway, so um. As I was uh, quickly uh, moving on, uh, so so uh, as I was saying about ghosts and hauntings and and stuff, uh, so do you have a, does your interest in the unexplained does it go beyond sort of haunted houses and and that stuff like that? Or do you, do you sort of have you got plans to sort of move beyond that and go into sort of uh, like cryptids, maybe aliens, UFOs, or or just weird other weird stuff? Like I said before, start with what you know, and ghosts are my big love. So I think I would like to mainly focus on ghosts, but inevitably when you're researching things, you find, and you know, various websites that you go on and books, it, they kind of go hand in hand with other things. And so on Patreon, I've, I've done the, you know, the great British Bigfoot before. So I think things like Bigfoot and aliens and general mysteries, I think they will be interjected naturally. But I think probably the foundation will be the paranormal. But I am interested in things like that as well. But I don't want to tri- I don't want to stray too far from what I know. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But but no, I, I do enjoy like aliens. Like I did a I did a episode about aliens recently, and I hadn't expected to do them so soon. But I was reading something and just got interested in it because. It depends what scares me. If it's if it's something that doesn't scare me as much as ghosts, then it will probably be a reserve option because I just, I like to enjoy reading things as I'm researching it and getting scared. But aliens didn't scare me as much as ghosts do. So things that don't scare me as much, I won't be reading about as much. So it just depends. It's one of those opportunistic organic things. But yeah, I will sometimes be doing things like Things like that, extra, extra strange. So, so far, <laughs> what's your favourite um, episode that you've done so far? Which one? Which one are you most uh, proud of? I don't know. I think because you put so much time into researching every single one, it feels like something you've created. And I don't have children, but I can imagine it's not. It's not the same. I'm not saying creating a podcast <laughs> is the same as having a child. Yeah, but it feels like you're equally as proud of each. And you've given your attention to all of them. I wouldn't ever research an episode if I didn't like it as much as another episode that I'd done. But I did really enjoy doing the Howarth one. And the last one that I did was the Haunted Pubs of York. And I I did enjoy doing that because I've been to York and I've been in most of the pubs that I mention. And so possibly if I've been somewhere, there might be a little extra bit of love for it if I've been somewhere. And so... The last place that I went that I did an episode about was Chillingham Castle. Oh, yes. Possibly, if I had to pick one, maybe it's that. Maybe it's that because I recently went there and all the sensations that I had were fresh and I got quite a lot of photographs. And so maybe I was a bit more immersed in that because it was an on-location. So I reckon maybe Chillingham Castle so far. Well, that's quite convenient because as we're coming to the end of this um, episode, I do want to uh, uh, talk about a couple of um, uh, shows that you produced. And one of the most recent ones that I listened to was Chillingham Castle. I I just want you to uh, relay to myself uh, and my listeners what it was like to go into a building with so much history. And how did that kind of uh, how did that kind of make you feel? 
Chillingham Castle is somewhere I've been before when I was a child. So there was an element of nostalgia going into that building, not just because there was a lot of history from centuries past, because I think it's like it's nearly a thousand years old or something Very like old, that. Yeah. But I had a lot of personal history there, yep. a lot of memories. And so going there, my initial feeling was of nostalgia. And obviously, the more I researched it, the more I realized just really how old it was. And it was, I think it's Sir Humphrey Wakefield who owns it now. He did a lot of renovation. And I remember in the old days, there were a lot of photographs around of what Chillingham Castle looked like before it was renovated. And there's all these black and white shots of strange hallways. Yeah. You know, with with stones crumbling down and stuff. And you kind of think... How many battles have been, you know, you, you know, in a film yeah. when someone's sword fighting and they'll fall against the wall and stuff like that. It, it sort of those pictures had that feel about it. And so Humphrey Wakefield has done amazing things with the place. He he's a big antiques dealer, so it's not not dealer uh, collector. So it's not like you're just walking into a place that has a lot of history steeped within its walls. It has, he has got stuff from all over the place, like historical artifacts and antiques and things and stuff from his own family history as well. So it sort of felt like a living history. It didn't feel like the castle was so rooted in the past. It felt like he's just going to keep adding to this castle with stuff that he collects and things way into the future. And so it was kind of a cacophony <laughs> of different centuries and it's, it's brilliant, but it hasn't, it hasn't renovated the castle so that you don't forget how old it is. He's left a lot of alcoves the same as probably they've been for ages. And, you know, you can look through gaps and walls and stuff and think what the heck's in that room. And it, it, it's just, it's just a really interesting place. It's really hard to describe. You would have to visit it to kind of know, what I'm really talking about, but it's, it's very cold as well. It's, I was talking to one of the guides and he said it can, it never, you you just can't heat it up. There has to be a fire in the tea room yeah. at all times. Cause it's just great that it's called Chillingham Castle and it's so cold. It's, it's a wonderful place and you can feel the history in your bones and with your eyes, but it's just, it's full of lots of different things. It's, it's, it's an amazing place. Yeah, I find castles fast fascinating. It's one of my favourite places to visit, as well as like old manor houses and stuff. Because I think that those kind of places, that when you go to those places and they've got a lot of history and people have lived there, and they that's kind of like it's not just a family that lived there. It's families were living there. They had generations of their grandsons and whatever they they people would live there, and then they'd have multiple families living in in places, and it was like. All the stuff that went on there as well, murder and, you know, all the yeah. people arguing and stuff. And I mean, it's it's pretty hardcore when you've got a car, you live in a castle and you've got like an oubliette and it's like, do you know what? Yeah. I, I don't like you. You're going down that hole <laughs> and then I'm going to have my dinner. It's like, you know, and, and people say, well, I don't understand why it's haunted. Don't, what? You know? <laughs> so, I mean, I remember there was a trying to remember the story but it was an, it was based around a, a, what we call a murder hole or an oubliette and uh it was um the place was renovated and they found this oubliette which had been covered up and a floor had been put over it and when they took it apart uh they uh they they found all these you know skeletons and stuff and and bodies oh it was mm. um uh i think it was uh lep castle Le- uh Le- how do you spell Lep? Lep, Lep Castle. Well, it's L E P. Yeah, it's L E A P. It's L. I think it's L E A P. And but you 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 could write it as Leap, Leap but it, it, they <laughs> they pronounce it as I'm pretty sure they pronounce it as Lep Castle. Um, but anyway, so the chap that bought it, uh, he same sort of thing. He bought this castle. Um, it was in ne- much needed repair. Uh, he lets people come and do ghost hunts, but there was an outbuildings. But in the olden days, they had like a a church there and stuff. And two brothers, I think it was two brothers, they had a, a bit of a falling out. One was a one was a preacher, uh, and one was a basically a, a military style kind of guy. And uh, the guy they, they fell out with each other and the military kind of guy killed the preacher guy in front of the rest of the family while they were he was doing a sermon. Over the years there's been a lot of paranormal activity there mm-hmm. and uh, it's another fascinating place. But uh, yeah, they found the um when they were cleaning it out, they found the remains of, I'm pretty sure, 
that it that was there. They found the remains of many people that had gone down these this this kind of murder hole. But here's the interesting mm. thing: when they were cleaning them out, they did find some personal items, and one of the personal items was from it was a a, po- a pocket watch, and it was dated from like the 1930s or the 1920s. So that what? tell yeah that so that tells me that one of those people that went down that hole wasn't that very long ago. I guess just because a dungeon like it's a hole isn't it if you wanted to get rid of someone yeah well if you it, was it's a murder it's a murder <laughs> i'm not laughing at murder no but yeah. person, but why would it people intrinsically possibly aren't so different <laughs> it's, when, it's weird. when they had official dungeons yeah it's yeah. like yeah uh, uh, i mean yeah. before uh law and order was around you had your own <laughs> law and order and uh each family would have their own set of rules i suppose but oh, yeah. I, I find yeah. all those stories and that all right some of them are uh, a little bit sort of you know added to over the years but when you go into those buildings yeah you really do you can really feel the history and maybe you know i've gone with mates and they're like oh, i can't feel nothing and it's like well you know try harder because i can but yeah you know, i think you've got to be interested as well in it in, in a i way. think so and sometimes, like, I don't necessarily need to have proof right in front of me. If I if I go to a haunted location, I'm just happy to be there. I don't necessarily need something to jump out at me. I don't necessarily need to capture anything on footage. I'm just happy to immerse myself in the atmosphere, yeah. really. It's, you know, you don't have to be presented with an all-singing, all-dancing sheet ghost <laughs> to enjoy those are the best, though. The sheet ghosts are the best. I mean, they're, Obviously. They're, they're <laughs> most scariest because it's, yeah, you, don't, you don't know what's under that sheet. And when you pull yes. a sheet away and yeah. uh, and there's nothing there. Uh, agreement. That's quite, that's quite, uh, that's quite scary. But uh, anyway, so we could talk all night, but uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I got to I would. Me. I would talk all night about ghosts. <laughs> but uh, I, I was going to say, for my um, uh, uh, final question, what's what have you got planned for... Uh, 2022 and your podcast moving forward i think because it's relatively young i i feel like it will be essentially more of the same but as i said before i'd like to go on a few more investigations and do a few more on-site experiences and i would i would one of my goals is to have you heard of my haunted hotel uh yeah yes uh that (laughs) yes Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm trying to recall. Uh, it is. Um, it is a basically every room is slightly different, aren't they? Well, well, this is it. I don't. I don't know so much about it. I know it's in Chester. It's a haunted hotel in Chester, and they have a YouTube channel where you stay a night in this haunted hotel in a room, and you you're recorded and put um, on the internet. Maybe not. Then <laughs> maybe I'm on about something completely different. <laughs> that that is that is one of my goals. I would love to get myself on there as a as a goal, but. Possibly. I don't know if that's an initial goal or the end goal. Maybe I need to do a few more where I don't get filmed first. But that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to do a few more on-site experiences and get myself on my haunted hotel and do more of the same that I already do. You know, I'm going to have to go and uh, check out this haunted hotel thing because that's a bit of a... Yeah, that's a bit weird. Um, that's quite don't, a good don't idea. Don't go on it before me. No, no, no. I'm not going to go idea, on it. my idea, not yours. No, I'm not going on it. I, I'll, <laughs> no, ladies first. You can go and you can go and experience it first. I'm staying away. I'll just watch it on YouTube. But, um, <laughs> you can do what you want, really. It's yeah. up to you. But, uh, I, well, I do have a... Um, uh, my listeners are going to go, here he goes. You should, have, you should have cut him off straight away. I'm going to tell a story. No, I'm not going to tell a story. I'm just going to say that um, one of my... Uh, one of my hopes and wishes is to get enough people together uh who are all like-minded and maybe are youtubers or podcasters and to rent a big like manor house because uh, a lot of the yeah. national trust they 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 do they, you know they let out to people for like a long weekend uh and everyone's got their own room so everybody's got their own little space and you can do you know your podcast or whatever from it do your recordings uh and uh, see what happens and have like a long weekend, yeah. like three or four days. Um, and I've been looking into this, seriously looking into it. I mean, I've talked to other people who are interested uh, and it's like, well, that would be quite cool. But you've got to make it realistic. You can't say, yeah, it's going to be £500 each because that's just mental. You know, it's you got it's got to be affordable because yeah. 
everybody's got to be involved but also we got everyone's got to have like a game plan and say well this is what we're going to do you know and mm. that would be quite cool so yeah i i, I do want to do something like that and i think it'll be really uh, re- be a real positive thing but as i say have you so have you done investigations yourself i have yes um not so much in recent years uh because of all the things that have been going on um but i have done stuff and gone to um alleged haunted locations with uh, <laughs> groups of people and um i've experienced stuff um i i i don't know i'm very open with the paranormal i have had experiences with the paranormal i've had uh like i used to be in, into evp quite heavily and oh yeah i love an evp so i had um i had two really good evps uh which were just like somebody stood in the room with you next to you uh and it was my friend was with me as well at the time and that scared me enough to not do any more recording for about another three it was about three months something like that i didn't go back to doing it uh but what happened well put put quickly um i was rec- i got into evp and i used to work in the music industry and i had oh. access to a, a studio and i would so that's what's you know that's a great place because everybody says uh, you never get EVPs on high quality equipment because you know it's the cheap rubbishy stuff that you get the EVPs on because the components are what's creating the noise phenomenon. And I thought, well, you know, that's kind right. of you know it's kind of valid. Uh, but let's put it to the test and go and do it in a studio and and see uh, with the facilities that I've got that could I get some EVPs. So I tried it for a number of weeks uh, with no success. And um, I was starting to lose hope that I was going to capture anything, thinking, you know, this is in the days of analog. It was all analog tape and stuff. And um, a friend of mine who worked there at this place as well, uh, he came one evening and we had a few beers and he was a complete disbeliever. Uh, he's like, nah, this isn't going to work. And I said, well, why don't, you know, give him the microphone. Why don't you go have a go? And of course, his attitude was like, oh, you know, ghosts, come on then, come on, come on, a ghost, talk to me. You know, he was just taking it as a bit of a stupid thing. And I'm like, yeah, give me it. And I and I asked some questions and we recorded for a couple of minutes. And then I wound the tape back. Well, all it was was a completely factory blank tape and, it, and there was a white noise generator going, being fed into it for background noise. And that was all there was. And a microphone, as soon as we asked the questions, we switched the microphone off. So there was no input apart from the white noise. And I wound it back. Uh, and I'm have my headphones on. And I'm listening to it, and after about I don't know twenty thirty seconds, there's a there's like a static click, and I hear a clearly hear a woman's voice in a in a in a kind of like posh Victorian voice going yes, and I'm like oh my God. I'm like <laughs> I'm like listening, and I'm like oh hang on, and then about ten maybe twenty seconds later, there's another static click, and there's a a man saying please reply. But it, the weird thing was, right? Oh my the, god! The man's voice sounded like he was. You know, when you were a kid and you could put a microphone through a radio and speak out the radio like you were a DJ, you know, <laughs> and you had that kind of tinny sound. It yeah. was like that. It was this. No, it I... sounded like that, but it sounded really clear. Uh, and I took my headphones off and gave it to my mate and made him listen, and he heard them. And he's like, oh, I'm going home. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what that is. I think you're tricking me. He, he thought I did it. He thought I was, you know, put made it up and was trying to like, you know, scare him. But no, I, I didn't. And for years, I always thought back about that's the best EVPs I ever got. Um, you still love them? Uh, you, well, here's the question. I've moved several times since then. And I remember it being on, I had a bunch of audio cassettes with my EVP stuff. And you know when you move and you think, yeah, I put it in a box and yeah. <laughs> and I put it, you know, I can't find it. Oh. I just can't find it. Uh, this Maybe is... you're not meant to. Maybe you're not meant to. Maybe well, it's just good as a... Yeah. Do you think that you were interacting with people from another period of history that thought you were a ghost talking to them? Well, uh, yeah, I have a theory on that, actually. With like the please, hi, and yes, you know. Yeah. I have a theory. If you could imagine that the person and the woman and the bloke are maybe mediums and yeah. they're having a seance yeah. and I'm the ghost <laughs> talking to them. Yeah, totally. <laughs> asking questions. Yeah, it's a bit like the others, isn't it? Um, but, um, well, there's, um, there's a... Have you, you've heard of the Perrin family haunting? The, you know, the film The Conjuring? Yeah. That's what they... 
Yeah. It's like a real, it's from the seventies. It's like a real life haunting in um, Rhode Island. And the the film, I, I really like the film, but if you, if you read about the Perrin family haunting, there's an instance where Carolyn Perrin, the mother, she walks into a room one day and there's a family having dinner at a table in this room in her house and they all look up at her like startled and then they disappear. Yeah. So she's seeing them and they're seeing her and it's like, did they have, was there a period of history well, decades ago where Carolyn Perrin was a ghost to some poor people? <laughs> it could in the be. Past? Yeah, well, it Weird. could be that uh, the way I look at it is that in some instances, maybe, maybe, I'm, it's only a theory, but maybe certain people under certain circumstances are able to wear the veil thins, shall we say, and you look back in time or even future uh, where yeah, people yeah. have seen into the future. Um, yeah. And uh, I remember, um, you know, people who have had accounts of, uh, well, for example, uh, as a, I think it's, um, I think it's Liverpool. There's a street in Liverpool which has had a lot of phenomenon, and uh, there was a, a case of a guy who was a security guard. This is more of a time slip, but we're getting into the realms of time yeah. slips here. Oh, he was yeah, a security so. guard, and uh, he was the guy uh, that the story's based around. The account's based around was a a, a petty uh, shoplifter, and he was being chased by security, and he ran down an alleyway. And he said, as he got to the end of the alleyway, he suddenly felt really dizzy. Uh, and he found himself in the area that he thought was like the high street uh, where the shops were. But everything was different. All the cars were much older. The people uh, didn't seem to sort of, you know, acknowledge him. Uh, he felt really dizzy and disorientated. And he started to panic. And he, uh, you know, he, he ran back up the alleyway and ran back out into present day but the interesting right. thing the interesting thing is the security guard they interviewed the security guard as well it was chasing him they he chased him down the alleyway and the alleyway kind of comes to like a dead end where you have to get over a fence or something is something that it would take time and this guy was literally you know an arm's length away from him and as the guy turned the corner he thought i've got him now and the, the young guy's not there so oh my gosh. where did he go did he actually <laughs> slip back in time i mean you've got cases of the couple uh coming back from uh france when they stayed at that uh chateau in france with uh friends and they thought oh this is really nice it's all very old worldy and uh there's no there's no windows in the in the windows you know it's just shutters and and the the, the beds are all like made got straw in the it, it was all very you know <laughs> all very lovely and this is great and they took some pictures and uh and even the gendarmes came in they had the older kind of capes on with the with the hats and stuff uh and they tried to pay with their money and like, no 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 money is free you know we're going to charge you uh and when they went back to find this place it was just bushes and fields and, no way and what the, would you what would you do <laughs> well here's the weird thing the the, <laughs> the the pictures that they took uh the pictures that they took oh, yeah uh they, there was there was no pictures it was just blank Oh wow! So did they? Did those? But the thing is that those How did people you work that out in your head. Yeah. Well, they stayed there overnight. They slept there. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's the couple that went to the English village when it had its. You know, it had all the flowers out and it people there. It was a lovely summer's day. It was like had a big sign saying "Best Village of 1980 something." And they're thinking, "Oh, that's lovely." You know, this is voted the best village village back then. This is like in the 90s. And uh, when they went back there, on they thought, let's go back to the village and uh, go through it on the way home from our holiday. And a few days later, and they went back to the village, and there was no sign, there was no flowers, uh, it was really run down, uh, and they couldn't understand you know, wh what happened, you know. So they went back and looked at the history of the village, and the village had did look like that back in the, I think it was the 80s, but they were in like the 90s, so... Did they actually slip back in time? Yeah. And see something? There's a lot of cases like that where people have had, you know, what you call time slips or, or you know, peeking into the past or whatever. But I find um, all of this, EVP, ITC, I find it all fascinating. And I think that if you think about it in a, I don't like using the word scientific because um, 
you, you how do you it's great when people who are scientists want to get involved with the paranormal i talked to um uh kieran o'keefe he was on an episode he oh, yeah. was on most haunted and he was the one that kind of looked at the evidence and said you know maybe it's this or maybe it's that and um and his outtake you know he's got some good thoughts on it and you know there is a part there is a human factor that uh with the paranormal that you can always you know what you experience might not be what you think you're experiencing it might be a part of us and the way that we're made up and how we see yeah. our reality you know we, we're going to get really deep we only uh, we only <laughs> experience our reality through our five senses and we know yeah. we know that those five senses can be manipulated so therefore how do we know what we're experiencing is what actually, actually what we're experiencing but you know stuff like this when you hear so many accounts of things like time slips yeah and you're saying you don't like to use the word scientific but yeah it's to me it baffles me how it's not taken seriously because people haven't made this up for fun no and i just think it it's it's a danger of staying within the realms of ridicule if you don't if you don't explore that there could be a scientific reason behind all this stuff like it just baffles me why something like that would not be taken seriously by yeah. people who are interested in that kind of thing, but they don't believe in the paranormal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think a lot, uh, a lot of it's to do with uh, people's careers and stuff. When they say, "Yo, I'm uh, studying ghosts," they're like, "What? You're doing what?" That's a, that's a yeah, load but, of old nonsense. And but it, it's really unfair. It is to say that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'm very open-minded. Uh, I don't like to say this, you know, it's this or it's that. I like yeah. to look at all of the, um, uh, you know, all of the things that are causing it. Um, yeah. And I also like to be a little bit sceptical as well. I won't, oh, yeah. I just won't blatantly go, well, that's uh, clearly that's a demon. You know, I, I just don't <laughs> go down that road. I just, can't, you know, maybe it's something that we don't, that we're, to us, maybe it's paranormal, but maybe in the realms of the world, and the way that the world works, it's normal. Uh, yeah, that we're exactly. just looking at it. You know, we haven't been around. The human species hasn't been around that long. And no. if you think of the, how old the world is and how old the universe is, uh, you know, God, I'm getting really deep now. But if you think about <laughs> it... Uh, no, we should get deep about this stuff. Yeah, we if, should, you, you know. if you think about it, you know, uh, how old everything is, and how short we've been around and how little attention we pay to things in our daily life. I mean, I think the people that are into the paranormal, into UFOs, into all this unexplained stuff, I do think that you, people like that think a little more. And I think that they've maybe had an experience in their life that kind of switches them onto it. Uh, yeah. But there are a lot of people out there that just that, that don't care. They're just, you know, <laughs> I just want to get home, watch, uh, you know, the telly, watch EastEnders and uh, Abbey Pie and Chips. <laughs> And go to bed. Oh, it must be nice to be like that. I uh, well, <laughs> I think we were Life all must be nice. we were all like that. Um, people, I think that some people just does it doesn't interest them. I mean, yeah. I've had conversations with people about the paranormal, and as soon as you start talking about stuff, it's like you can see that they're just like looking at you, like, yeah, okay, yeah, you are clearly you're a bit bonkers, aren't you? You know, <laughs> yeah, it's and, not fair, is it? <laughs> and you, and you you don't want to come across like that. But sometimes mm. you, you know, you have that conversation uh, and you sort of, you know when to sort of stop talking and uh, you, you know, yeah. you get that look and you're like, yeah, I think it's time I just stopped talking and just sort of <laughs> said I had to go or something. Because, yeah, I mean, I'm not being, I don't, I don't want to come off as like, um, you know, I'm not, I ain't no guru. I ain't no know all. I just, I think that everyone is free to believe in what they want to believe in. But I think that if you are looking at stuff that, as I say, the paranormal, where multiple people have had these experiences, yeah. maybe it is good. I mean, there are people out there doing some really good work and doing some really yeah. good scientific work. Oh, yeah. But yeah. it's not scientific in the realms of, uh, for example, uh, Anthony Peake, an author, he's written a number of papers, okay, uh, regarding life after death and uh, his thoughts and theories. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the, uh, stuff that he puts in his books isn't made up stuff it's based on scientific fact theory mm -hmm. quantum physics all that stuff and he and he does his research and he, he really puts a lot of work in and even academia they look at his stuff and go yeah well you know 
Mm. You know, but the stuff he's doing, and he gets so frustrated because he's thinking, oh, yeah, why I am I doing imagine. this? Why am I bothering yeah. putting these books together? If if those people that can actually make a difference, just like, yeah, well, whatever, you know. Yeah, and then we'll never get anywhere if that attitude continues forever. Well, yeah. It's kind of silly, really. Well, I... Uh... Open, your, open your minds, people. Well, yeah, there you go. Uh, on, on that on that note, uh, I think uh, we're going to end this episode before uh, it's just going to turn into like a two hour rant about uh, about stuff, you know. Uh, but so yeah, so um, um, haunted up north. Uh, we'll continue. Uh, you've got some. Uh, uh, what's what's your what's your? Uh, do you do like seasons and stuff, or do you just make an episode on something that interests you? Do you do like seasons or? When you say seasons... Well, is it, so this season, I'm going to do an episode only on castles. Is it going to be like oh, four episodes no. on castles, or is it going to be like, what do I fancy doing? That involves too much planning. Right. No. <laughs> well, yes, I am I know where you are there. I don't want to make it a job. It's a, you know... <laughs> uh, no, but you're, you're right. It's a good idea to do things like that. I did actually want to do a... like a haunted pub crawl. So I thought perhaps it would be a good idea to I've already done pubs, so I've sort of I've sort of maybe slightly ruined it for myself, but I would like to do a series uh, and call it a pub crawl. Yeah. Uh, so where you go to uh, different haunted locations and maybe just in one one city or something like that. So yeah, no, I have had possibly some kind of uh notion of doing like a collection of things. And so if I did do something like that, it would probably be the haunted pub crawl. That'd be cool. That'd be yeah, interesting. But, but for now, it's uh, whatever takes my little mind's fancy. Awesome. <laughs> All right, Victoria. Well, thank you very much for uh, coming and keeping me company on this uh, episode. It was uh, thank you for very, asking me. That's it was quite, an honour. That's uh, quite a right. That's quite a right. <laughs> um, I'm sure you'll be back at some point, uh, and we'll uh, we'll talk some more on uh, on the paranormal and stuff. Cool. But uh, yeah, so parent. Uh, Oh, it's Paratalk, actually. It's not the Paranormal Podcast. That's you. Yeah, that's uh, Paratalk. Uh, that's where you're going to find everything. Paratalk, uh, dot, uh, paratalkpodcast.com. Let me get it right. <laughs> and uh, of, Yeah, it is. Uh, I do get I do get confused. <laughs> uh, of course, all of your details will be with this uh, episode so that uh, people can uh, find their way to you. But, uh, yeah, until next episode, everyone, thanks for listening, and I'll speak to you soon. Mm-hmm.